evening, everyone. We'd like to bring your attention to the Alexander County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for November the 6th of 2023. Um, Commissioner Larry Yoder will be giving the invocation and Vice Chairman Lill will be uh, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Our kind and most gracious, we appreciate the opportunity that we have together here this evening to take on the county's business. Be with us as we make decisions and to do the things that you'd have us do that would make our county a better place to live, a better place to work, and a better place to raise our children. Lord, we'd ask you that you'd be with the leaders across this world. Be with them and give them the understanding that they need how to bring peace and comfort throughout our world. Be with our leaders, especially in Washington. Be with those folks in Israel. Be with those folks in Ukraine. Be with our local, state, and federal law enforcement. Be with them because we know that if something were to happen, they would be the first ones on the line. We'd ask you to be with our emergency personnel, look after them, take care of them, and help us as we go home tonight that we arrive home safely. For we ask all these things in thy name. Amen. Amen. Everyone face the black, please. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Does any commissioners have a report to give this evening? this time I'd like to remind uh, all the commissioners that this year is almost gone. 2024 is speedily coming towards us here. And um, next month's meeting, we will need to elect a new chairman and vice chairman for the board. <coughs> next on the agenda is adoption. Uh, you've had a chance to uh, look it over. Do I have a motion to accept? Move to approve the agenda as presented, sir. Second. All in favor, right hand. Motion carries. Did we have anyone to sign up for public comment? Okay. Next up, by a health update from Zach Shepard. If you would, come forward, sir. Podium's yours. Thanks, sir. And good evening. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I wanted to take this time just to give a brief 5,000 foot overview of some some things coming down the pipeline um, As I'm sure you all are aware uh, we now have a state budget in place uh, which also uh, Means we have Medicaid expansion, which also means there's a few other things happening uh, as well so uh, one of those items is that the uh, General Assembly <coughs> directed uh, Secretary Kinsley to reduce uh, the number of LME MCOs to no more than five and no fewer than four. Um, I won't make this mistake again. I had another commissioner say, okay, LME MCO, please explain. Please be clear about your acronyms. And I, I, I'm gonna do that. So uh, local management entity managed care organization. So the LME MCO for Alexander County is of course via health. Uh, so with that uh, provision in the budget, Secretary Kinsley directed that uh, Sand Hills LME MCO be dissolved. Uh, this would also assign Rockingham County to via health. So we would go from 31 counties to 32 counties. Uh, Partners and Alliance will each also be assigned to county. Um, this was also, there was also a direction to give remaining counties to East Point and that East Point consolidate with Trillium, effectively making four uh, LME MCOs across the state. Still a lot more to come with all this information and of course I'll be happy to update the board as we know more. Um, we are still looking at our tailored plan go live date no later than July 1st of 2024. We'll see if that stays on track. It has been kicked further down the road, I believe four times now at this point. So we will see if we're still slated to go live on uh, 
July 1st, 2024. Okay, uh, the Consolidated Innovations Waiver Waitlist Dashboard has been released. The Innovations Waiver is, of course, our state waiver for members receiving intellectual and developmental disability services in the community. Um, there are continued issues with our tailored care management rollout. The, we'll continue to work on that throughout the rest of the year and up until our tailored pl plan go live date. Uh, as I said, we do have expanded Medicaid in the state budget now. That will go live on December 1st of this year. Uh, we've already started having meetings with the department and talking through uh, what that process is going to look like, but still a lot more work yet to be done. Um, for anyone who is interested in learning more about that, you can go to this link um, at the DHHS uh, website. It'll tell you more about the expansion and what that means and how uh, folks can check their eligibility. Um, right now, we are anticipating approximately 76 new members to receive Medicaid from Alexander County. That is, let me be clear, that is only under VIA health. That is not the total number that will be eligible for Medicaid. Um, there will be more that will be eligible. Those 76 are just the ones that we will manage. Um, I will say if, if anyone is interested in checking their eligibility with a go live date of December 1st, I would direct them to go to DSS to go ahead and get that process started. Go ahead and start checking that el eligibility. That way, if if they can get everything worked out once go live happens December 1st, then they can have coverage. Um, Healthy Opportunities is another program that we've got going live February 1st that focuses on social determinants of health, such as housing, food insecurity, transportation, those sort of things. Uh, and then Innovations Waiver Amendment, not submitted timely. Our Appendix K flexibilities were supposed to end November 11th of 2023. Okay, I've got just uh, some some budget provisions in here for you to take a look at. If you've got questions, feel free to ask. This is our um, intellectual and developmental disabilities and traumatic brain injury budget. Not much change going on there between fiscal year 24 and 25. And then we can go to the next slide. Then we have behavioral health budget provisions. There are some changes there, some increases between fiscal year 24 and 25. But feel free to look at those at your leisure and ask questions if you have them. Okay. So I did want to highlight a couple of uh, programs that we've got going on that we're really excited about, um, that we wanted to make sure that we're uh, letting everybody know about, and it's related to our work with uh, Benchmarks, who is a company that's really focused on children in foster care and making sure that they are well cared for, that they're thriving in their community with a family. Um, one of those programs uh, is called the Pathways to Permanency program that we've been working with uh, not only Benchmarks, but all of our local DSS offices. We will be kicking off a foster care recruitment campaign um, here soon to really ramp up our um, foster care families in our counties. And I don't think Thomas is here, but Thomas has been really great to work with him and his staff uh, to plan this out. And I know that they've got some great ideas about how to really roll this recruitment campaign out. Uh, we've also, through Pathways to Permanency, got some, some training. Uh, there's a whole training series that we've been able to develop with benchmarks uh, that we can roll out in the community into DSS offices and providers. And there's the list of those trainings there. And then lastly, I uh, just wanted to highlight that we'll be kicking off uh, over the next several months a program uh, with youth villages to ensure that kids in foster care get adequate assessment, which will ultimately mean that they get the services that they need and um, 
they can have direct access to that through DSS. Um, we can kind of break down some of the barriers between access and that and just go directly to DSS and work with those kids in foster care. But um, these will be trauma-informed, proactive uh, assessments so that we make sure that each child is, is getting the care that they need. And I think that is it. Be happy to answer any questions. Good report, a lot of information. Things are changing, so y'all are keeping up, looks like. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it. Cherry Kilby, Veteran Services Officer, will be delivering Operation Greenlight Proclamation. I guess y'all can hear me. Um, it's basically the same one as last year. We're just making it in perpetuity because I don't ever see the county not supporting veterans. So, um, Whereas the residents of Alexander County have great respect, admiration, and the utmost gratitude for all men and women who have selflessly served our country and this community in the armed forces. And whereas the contributions and sacrifices of those who served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and way of life enjoyed by our citizens. And whereas Alexander County seeks to honor individuals who have made countless sacrifices for freedom by placing themselves in harm's way for the good of all. And whereas veterans continue to serve our community in the American Legion, veterans of foreign wars, religious groups, civil service, and by functioning as county veteran service officers in 29 states to help fellow former service members access more than $52 billion in federal health, disability, and compensation benefits each year. And whereas approximately 200,000 service members transition to civilian communities annually, which is expected to increase by 20% in the near future, and whereas studies indicate that 44 to 72 percent of service members experience high levels of stress during the transition from military to civilian life and are at high risk for suicide during the first year after active service. And whereas the National Association of Counties encourages all counties, parishes, and boroughs to recognize Operation Greenlight for veterans. And whereas Alexander County appreciates the sacrifice of our United States military personnel and believes specific recognition should be granted. Now therefore be it resolved with designation as a green light for Veterans County, the Alexander County Board of Commissioners does hereby declare the time frame each year between October 1st through Veterans Day, November 11th, as a time to salute and honor the service and sacrifices of our men and women in uniform transitioning from active service. Be it further resolved that, in observance of Operation Greenlight, Alexander County encourages its citizens in patriotic tradition to recognize the importance of honoring all those who made immeasurable sacrifices to preserve freedom by displaying green lights in a window of their place of business or residence each year during the week prior to and on Veterans Day. It really looked nice last year when all the green lights were on. It did. I was surprised that how many businesses just did it on their own. They did. And it was really, I agree with you, I was really surprised that so many of them uh, had, had the green lights on. And, 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 you know, I think when we call attention to this, um, I think it's vitally important that folks understand the suicide rate for our veterans and our military personnel. Yes. It's absolutely horrible. And... You know, I, I, I speak to, our, to the general public and I speak to the people out there that's listening, but I also want to say to the veterans, if you need help, please contact us. We'll do everything we can to assist you. Uh, because that was one of the, that also was one of the big things in the association last year mm -hmm. that they really pushed about the veterans. And uh, uh, there's a, a movie out now that's, through the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Yes. You need to see that movie. I can assure you that if it doesn't bring a tear to your eye uh, about what they have gone through since they have retired from military uh, and, and some of them because of their wounds and the things that have happened to them. But a lot of those people that participated in that movie uh, are 
county commissioners. Mm -hmm. There are people that work for the state in different organizations, and it's a very valuable movie that uh, uh, we were able to see when uh, 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 we were in Raleigh, and, and it was very heartbreaking. One of the gentlemen that's on there is from uh, Western North Carolina. I've served on several committees with him, and great guy. I would say he's a former Marine, but he'll never be a former Marine. He's a United States <laughs> Marine, man, I'm telling you. And, uh, but I think it's finally important if you know people that have a problem that contact somebody. Let's help our military personnel because they put their life on the line, line for us, whether it's voluntarily or whether when it's back whenever the draft was in effect. doesn't matter. And uh, they put their life on the line and made sacrifices to, to protect us and to protect the people around the world. So uh, it's a good thing, and I thank you. I want to personally say thank you for everything you've done for our military personnel in this county because I hear good things. And That's hearing good. good things about what you do for the military personnel is very important. And thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you to our veterans who have given of their service and their time to our country. Thank you, ma'am. Any other commissioner have a comment? Do I have a uh, motion to approve the proclamation supporting Operation Greenlight for veterans? Make a motion to approve the proclamation as stated. Second. Okay. All in favor, right hand. <coughs> motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Cherry. Next on the uh, uh, agenda is uh, consolidation of County Water and Sewer Funds Resolution and Budget Amendment Number 11 given by County Manager. Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you for allowing me to present tonight. I've got a number of things in order here to present. Um, we'll start with um, discussion of a, a proposal to consolidate our Bethlehem Water, Bethlehem Sewer, and County Water and Sewer Funds into one fund. So. We're only talking about our enterprise funds here, our water and sewer funds. This is not general fund. We typically talk about the general fund. This is just our enterprise funds on our water and sewer side. So we'll go back to the beginning just for historical purposes. Uh, 42 years ago this month, uh, 1981, uh, commissioners passed a resolution to create the Bethlehem Water District and the Highway 16 South Water District. A few years later, five years later, in March of 86, a resolution was passed to create the Sugarloaf Water District. In 1989, Sugarloaf Water District issued bonds. 91, the Bethlehem Water District issued bonds. There was some financing and refinancing along the way. Uh, we'll fast forward to 2010 when the Bethlehem Sewer District was formed. So that's kind of a little bit of a past there, talking about the history of our different water funds and consolidation. Um, of some or the debt issuance of some of those funds. Um, throughout the years, though, there was times in which the commissioners met and passed resolutions to consolidate some of those funds that was mentioned just a few minutes ago. Uh, so tonight we're doing something very similar to that. So what we have left to date, um, we do not have any debt or outstanding bonds that are tied to any of the existing um, uh, legal entities that we have created over the years. So we still have three legal entities. Uh, one is the Bethlehem Water Fund. Two is the Bethlehem Sewer Fund, and then three we have the County Water and Sewer Fund. The 16 is Sugarloaf Water Fund throughout the years at some point, I don't have a date for you, became the County Water and Sewer Fund. So tonight we're asking for you all to pass a resolution so we have documentation that will allow us moving forward to consolidate those three remaining funds into one fund, and we would call that the Alexander County Water and Sewer Fund. There would be no impact on the financials. We're simply asking, and the budget amendment number 11 looks long and complicated, and it is, it would be the closing of the two remaining funds, the Bethlehem Water and Sewer, and moving those funds into the Alexander County Water and Sewer Fund. I do have those numbers. If you have questions about what those would look like in total, where we would stand or where we would stand as of the end of this past year, um, be happy to answer any questions you might have, and hopefully it isn't too confusing in what we're asking for. Question. This Certainly. is only to clear up for accounting purposes. That, that is correct. So currently, if you look at our financial statements um, and, and the ones that are soon to be issued, you will see uh, a total of four enterprise funds, one being the landfill fund, the other three being the water and sewer funds. So right now we have three separate columns of assets and liabilities and expenses and revenues, et cetera, throughout the financial statement. So we're asking to consolidate that for a more concise approach and more transparency in how that's being, being, um, being recorded. And then also 
uh, by doing away with uh, these different entities will have no effect on future grants? No, sir, not at all. It would not. Water will continue to flow. That is our goal, absolutely. So we, uh, we continue to work with the city of Hickory and a great partnership there for them to provide water. So um, we are optimistic that will continue to happen and sewer will continue to go the other direction. So <laughs> as long as the two don't cross, yep. we'll be good to go. Clean water, <laughs> dirty water. Absolutely. Any other questions or comments from the board? Well, this makes complete sense. Um, yeah. You know, why complicate it? Correct. We'll give you a couple updates though for numbers. The water, the so currently the Bethlehem water and the county water um, systems are pretty equal. So Bethlehem has 2,830 customers. The county water has 2,555. So county's a little bit less than Bethlehem. Bethlehem sewer is right at 500 customers. So combining these again, no impacts other than we would have one water and sewer fund with about 6,000 customers. A little bit less than 6,000 customers. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution to consolidate county water and sewer funds? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the consolidation of the Bethlehem water and sewer funds and the county water and sewer funds. Second. All in favor, right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Fox, just go ahead and carry on with the 2024 uh, Board of Commissioners meeting schedule. Certainly. Um, I believe you have within your packet, and we put out to the public a copy of a draft of our 2024 Commissioner meeting schedule. This does follow in line with our past and history of trying to go for our first Monday of each month. We do have some adjustments throughout with conferences, et cetera, um, but we'll need you all to review this, and if so fit, uh, make a motion and adopt the 2024 commissioner schedule for this upcoming year this has been in our packet uh, does any commissioner uh, have an issue with the, the proposed proposed schedule move to approve as is do I have a second second all in favor right hand motion carries unanimously mr. Fox carry on with the 2024 holiday schedule for yes, the sir. county thank you chair uh, as with our 2024 commissioner schedule, this is our 2024 holiday schedule. We um, follow the state holidays as we've done in the past. And so this is a calendar that represents what our proposed holidays would be. This is again, in accordance with our state suggested holidays that we have done so in the past. <coughs> Mr. Chair, make a motion to approve the holiday schedule as presented. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. Fox will carry on with budget ordinance amendment number 10. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, this is number 10. A few minutes ago we did 11. That 11 was to consolidate the water and sewer funds into one. Uh, 10 is our only official budget amendment for tonight. Um, it's a two-parter. It's within the same amendment. The first one is moving money from one department to another. This is so something that we have not done a tremendous amount in the past, but as one department has excess funds, we perhaps will bring to you all amendments in which we're moving um, funds from one department to another. Um, I have the ability to move from line item to line item within the department, but this is moving from one department to another. Um, and this is for um, a software purchase. The second one is moving money out of fund balance that was rolled into fund balance last year. So. Uh, we've only had one budget amendment to date that has been an, a, an addition to what we would call our expenditures. This one is an addition, but this is only because we allowed funds to roll into fund balance on June 30th. We now are asking for those back this year. Um, so it will be an additional expenditure, but however, it was something that was rolled into fund balance. Um, and as I mentioned just briefly earlier, you will have a copy of the audit report presented next month. Uh, that was submitted today officially, and we'll have our official presentation next month. So when the audit obviously closes the books or when the, the finance staff closes the books and the audit's conducted on June 30th, we do have a tendency to have things roll into that fund balance. This is just asking for that to come back out and that's $16,280. And just for the record, um, this is our 10th one and 11th one. We were at 23 last year and 33 the year before. So we are making progress there in the reductions of our budget amendments. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, move to approve. Budget amendment number 10. Second. Ronnie uh, has a second, I believe. Mm -hmm. All in favor, right hand. 
motion to approve. Um, in regards to the board committee appointments, uh, uh, clerk was going to deliver, but she's got a little under the weather going. So, Mr. Fox. We only have one tonight for Council on Aging. Um, we are asking you all to appoint Vicki Martin to a three-year term for Council on Aging. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the committee appointment. As second. presented. Uh, Mr. Herman had a second. All in favor say, or uh, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Uh, in regards to consent agenda, everyone's had a chance to look over those. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Make a motion to approve consent agenda as given to us in our packet. Second. All in favor, right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, county manager's report. Go ahead, sir. Back up here. Start by saying thank you to a few folks here with regards to the Apple Festival. So the Apple Festival took place right after our last meeting last month. Um, this one was um, heavily attended, 450 vendors is what we were told. We only had four total instances that we would consider either medical or public safety in nature, which I believe is some of uh, one of the all-time low numbers there. I believe a lot of that has to do with some pre-planning that took place. I would like to publicly thank Gina K. Hanoski for her willingness to come together with county and town staff and have several meetings prior to the event um, and allowing us to uh, participate within that um, incident or within that event and I think uh, reduce those incidences down hopefully and allowed us to be able to to be very reactive towards the um, ones that did play, take place so I want to say thank you to uh, all those involved with the Apple Festival um, again 450 vendors and I do not have a number of attendees but I'm sure that was quite a few um, our annual soil and water days took place um, October 25th and 26th um, soil and water director Pamela Bowman had about 400 students, fifth graders throughout the county that attended. Um, and want to just give a kind of a list of thank yous here publicly for those that participated uh, in one way or the other. Herman Dairy Farm, Dairy Farmers of America, Sugarloaf Orchards, New South Tractor of Newton, Chapman Jersey Farm LLC. And then in addition, the Alexander Soil and Water Conservation District um, Board, the Alexander um, Central High School FFA students, Alexander Cooperative Extension, Lincoln, uh, Soil and Water District, Burke Soil and Water District, Caldwell Soil and Water District, um, Alexander County GIS, 911, and Rocky Face Park, along with NC Forest Service and Tuttle Educational State Forest. I did have a chance to go out and participate in one of the days, and I was overly impressed with not only the questions and the presentations that were taking place, but the collaborative effort with all of the entities that I just mentioned coming from counties surrounding <laughs> us. Um, it was pretty remarkable to see. Weather could not have been more perfect, um, and um, it was all held out at the Herman Dairy Farm, and we're very thankful for that um, venue and the opportunity for us to have that there. So we had about 400 total fifth graders during those times. Um, Zach mentioned earlier Medicaid expansion. That is going to, to take place officially on December the 1st. Our numbers are projected right now around 2,000. Um, again, um, uh, Director Mitchell, I think, spoke a month before last on the unknowns with what this will look like. Um, we do not expect to have 2,000 or so folks showing up on December 1st. There's an unknown there of how this will happen and, and the immediacy of it. So we're mindful of that and paying attention to that as we move forward. But Medicaid expansion did take place within the budget and officially will start on December the 1st. Again, looking at the numbers that the state have provided us, about 2,000 um, residents are potentially eligible for that. And we had about we have about 10,000 right now within our caseload. Our comp plan is not officially out. Some of you have participated within the steering committee. I've got a copy of it here. This is called the 2045 comp plan. Um, this is the first time that we've updated our comp plan in about 20 years. So it's been a while and I know it's been a great deal of effort. Again, I know some of you have participated in that steering committee and we're appreciative of that. It is set to go to the planning board within the next month, I believe. Um, and then it will be back to you all after the first of the year for some public input and opportunities to uh, review it and provide some feedback. So again, that's a big deal in planning, not only looking back for 20 years that we've not been able to update it, but now looking another 20 plus years forward um, and planning for the future of growth and future of our county. I mentioned earlier audit was submitted officially today. Um, so that is a good sign. We did not have any findings. So last year we did have a couple findings within our compliance, which is in, within the DSS and health side. This year we did not have any findings, so none. So next month, the audit firm, Martin Starnes and Associates, will be here to do a presentation and they will say the same thing. It was a clean audit opinion, 
no findings, no material misstatements, no issues whatsoever. And overall, I think you'll be pleased with some of the numbers that will be presented next month. So that will be on the agenda in December. Um, I finished last month, and I'll finish this month with um, the same, other than questions that you all may have. Um, our port um, post-overdose uh, recovery team, our, our post-overdose um, overdose recovery paramedic um, that we mentioned last month, something that you all approved in August, again, continues to show dividends. Unfortunately, here are some numbers in the last 60 days. We've had 17 overdoses in the county in the last seven, seven, uh, 60 days uh, with one death, and that's unfortunate. However, we are seeing some headway within our, our program. We have finally connected and successfully delivered our first clot to a recovery program this past week, and we have a second one that's in the works. Um, we have about 20 clients right now that we're working with that we've been able to make contact with, one that's already been delivered into potential recover into a recovery program and a second one that hopefully be will be delivered um, sometime this week uh, so we're starting to see headway there and we're very appreciative again of you all making the um, action or taking the action to, to be able to utilize those opioid funds back in August and, and um, very pleased with Shannon and, and all he's been able to accomplish in such a short amount of time so with that that concludes my update but be more than happy to answer any questions about anything that I presented or anything county related Good report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, at this time, we're going to be entering closed session um, per NCGS 143-31811, A3, 4, 5, and 6, attorney client privilege, economic development, contractual, and personnel. We may come back into open session to uh, make a motion on a contractual matter. Do I have a uh, motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor, right here. <clears throat> <We stand. clears throat>